Hey, welcome to Woodport Guitars. We're going to start a new build, the President Macho Camacho box. And looking at the size, thickness of these walls, I don't think we're going to get a great acoustic quality out of them. So I'm going to go all electric with it. And I've gotten this hardware. And this is a top loading or bottom loading bridge. Got little adjustment screws. And the tuner I'm going to use. Pretty nice. So all black hardware. The box is about eight by eight and a quarter. The neck piece of wood here, of course, is three quarter by inch and a half, which is 19 millimeters by 38 millimeters. And this one is 34 inches long. The heel, just short piece of wood here. I pretty much just eyeball what I want. I, I bump it up against this side. I know I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to shape this. So I just add an inch and a half, whatever I feel like. Uh, it's a smaller box. I'm going to use a shorter heel on it. And I want to do the neck, headstock, everything black. I don't want to paint it black. I want it to look like it's dyed black. Uh, I want to still be able to see the wood grain, but I want it as dark as possible, as black as possible. And besides doing that, I'm going to do a angled headstock and I'm going to do a scarf joint. And you can see that line right across there where the scarf joint comes together. So when you end up neck wood, this is a piece for the headstock. It's going to be something like that. So if you've been following along on the videos, you know the last one to come out was the piezos and capacitors. And it's gotten a lot of views. Thank you. And so it kind of tells me I'm not the only one searching, going down this path. So two comments I want to share. First from Andrew. The source impedance of a piezo pickup is entirely different from that of a regular magnetic guitar pickup. So the capacitor does not function like it would do in a regular guitar tone control. Thank you, Andrew. Needed to be reminded of that, and you pointed me in a, a good direction. So not only is it different, it's ridiculously high, where most circuits I've looked at with preamps, amps, pedals, most guitars want to see electric guitars with magnetic pickups want to see about one meg ohm impedance on the input where the piezo would like to see five to ten even 20 meg ohm which is so much higher um, the circuits are a little different so yeah, it went down the whole road that's been the same thing for all these smoky amp, ruby amp, any small 386 amp guitar pedals, it's buffers. Buffers and preamps. That's pretty much where it all leads back to. Alright, the other comment the other comment is from Hurdy. First names only. I hope he gets it. Another way to describe a piezo is it's microphonic. It turns your CBG into a microphone, hence the easy feedback squealing, especially when played near the amp. I've used bar piezos under the lid, under the bridge position, and it seems to cut the feedback a bit. Using an onboard three-channel preamp helps even more. So, well, yeah, I couldn't agree more. So thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, I also say that twin one has a rod piezo right under the bridge and it has a three band i'm sorry five band eq with a preamp and yeah it sounds pretty good you can do a lot with it it's totally different than just a piezo um, you already have that buffer preamp circuit going on in there to make these angled headstocks scarf joints I actually use this homemade scarf joint jig. And all it is is something that I can put against the fence of my chop saw. I can put the neck here and the chop saw cuts 90 to this back plate. So it makes me a nice long angle on here. This shop made jig I am using allows me to cut a sharper angle than just a 45 degree angle. 
I attach it to the fence of my chop saw with a couple of screws, clamp the neck or headstock to the jig, and cut. These jigs are simple to make. You just use whatever angle you want to use. This jig is set at 15 degrees, and that's what I used on this headstock. So after I cut the headstock piece, I'm going to add a piece of wood to either side of the headstock, I call them wings, to make the headstock wide enough for the headstock shape that I want. When that is dry enough, I'll then thin it up a bit on the bandsaw. I need to make it thin enough for the tuners to fit. The tuners I've ordered will fit a 0.6 inch thick headstock then cut my shape into the headstock. So if you've ever glued two angled pieces together, you know the challenges. If not, well, it can be frustrating trying to get the clamps in the right places, maybe a stop block here or there. No, nope. I'm going to try the Snowden trick. He's not the first person to do this, I'm sure, but I've seen him do it on a fretboard glue ups and scarf joints. Just two small tacks or nails. Clip them off pretty short, and when you put the two pieces together, the two little nails act like pins and keep the pieces from shifting, making glue up a lot easier. So we're going to be waiting on some glue to dry. So next video, we're going to be laying out the frets, cutting the fret slots, and starting to really get the neck laid out to where it's going to go into this box. Now, if you made it this far, thank you. Thank you for watching. I'd love it if you commented, subscribe click that notification bell so you know when the next videos come out and give us a thumbs up we really appreciate it here so until next time have fun